Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I've got a fountain pen showdown for you. They're two pens, very similar colours. The first one is this. This is a D-Lake New Moon 2. Cost me $18. The second pen is this one. This is a Twisby Draco. Cost me 215 Australian dollars. So quite a big difference in price. Let's take a look at these pens, compare them against each other, see how they're right, and then we'll give them a score. So welcome down to the mat. Let's jump in. So the first pen for today is by D-Lake, and it's the New Moon 2. I love the colouring of this. It's muted. You know, it's not jumping off there in your face, but it is unusual. Just one more turn round for you. The cap takes three turns to come off. So it takes quite a few. I don't like that. I'd be I'd much prefer that if it was like one to one and a half. But then we've got a cartridge converter with metal fittings. The nib on this, it's fairly small, number five size, but it's a D-like one, and it's in fine. Let's look at the body now. The body, we start here at the top, it's a little bit flat. The cap gently angles outward until we get to this metal cap band. There we go. It then gradually tapers off down until we get to the body. There's a tiniest little step there at the bottom of the cap. And the body, to me, tapers down until we get here to another silver coloured band and then we've got a flat end finial. It's nice enough, doesn't really jump out of the page at you though. Again taking the cap off, in my hand I do find this pen it feels ever so slightly too short. If we look down at the bottom of the section my fingers are nearly touching, it's very narrow. If I post it it actually feels quite nice. And this is how I tend to use this pen. It's one of the few pens where I actually do use it posted. It still feels a little bit on the narrow side, but nowhere near as bad. I think, I don't know, maybe that extra length is somehow tricking my mind. Let's pop this one out of the way and we'll fetch in the Twisby Draco. So very similar patterning on this, as you can see, it's got them gorgeous, it's got more brighter colours, I would say. There's still hints of black. We will look at them side by side in a second. It's still pretty. Still nice. It's also wider. Again, we'll have a look at some size comparisons in a minute, and that's where it will come out. This one here, the cap comes off about one and a quarter turns. But this, it's a piston filler. It's not a cartridge converter. I like piston filling pens because usually I can get more ink in them and they last longer. One of the disadvantages with a lot of piston fillers, you don't know how much ink you've got. With this, there is this tiny ink window here. It's hard to see though, isn't it? It really is small. I think that should be at least double the size it is. But it lets me see the ink, so it does it, but just not as easy as I would like. We'll take a very quick look at the nib. This is rose gold coloured, but again, it's a small nib. It looks wider than the D-like one, but it's still a number five. Let's take a look at the body. So we've got a flat top. In there, we've got the Twisby logo. We come down into the main cap. To my eye... This very slightly tapers out until we get to the bottom of this rose gold coloured clip. Then it seems to go still slightly tapering all the way to the end of the cap. We've got Twisby engraved on there. I think that looks nice. Then we've got this rose gold coloured cap band with a drop down to the main body. The main body Again, to my eye, ever so slightly tapering down till we get to another rose gold band. And then here, this is the piston mechanism. I'm not going to fiddle with that because there's ink in the pen. And we've got there a 
ever so slightly dermed end. It's so slight that unless you were looking for it, I don't think you'd actually see it. Just to turn this around again, I do think the colours are nice. They're unusual. Now, Twisby do say that this is a limited release. It was 3,000 worldwide. To my mind, that's not limited. But I can understand why they want to say that. Pop that to one side again. So let's take a look at the pens side by side, because really here what we're comparing is the colouring. So here comes the Draco, and here comes the D-like. I'm going to try and put them side by side. So you can see the size difference already. Look how much smaller that D-like is compared to the Draco. I didn't show you the Draco in my hand, did I? Here we go. In my hand, this is actually really nice and posted. No need to post this. It's nice, it's comfortable, and it's broader at the bottom. That makes all the difference. It does though, I don't know if you can see the bottom there of the section, there is a distinctive lip, and I do find that my fingers tend to dig into that. But that's mainly because I tend to hold my pens fairly low down. Anyway, back to the comparisons. When we see them side by side, you can see the difference in the colour. The Draco, it's got a lot more pink in it, whereas the D-like, now when you see them side by side, it seems quite brown in comparison. I've got to be honest, colour-wise, I prefer the D-like. I like that more browner colour than the paints that you see in the Draco. But that's a very personal thing. Let's do a couple of size comparisons. So first pen I'm going to fetch in, I'll pop it on the other side of the Draco. This is a Lamy Safari. So the Draco, ever so slightly longer. The D-like, ever so slightly shorter. Then I'll fetch in a Pilot Metropolitan. Again, the D-like, it's shorter than the Metropolitan. The Draco, definitely larger. I'm going to take off the caps so we can look at the nibs. So here we go. What I've tried to do is line the bottom of the nibs up with each other. None of them are really big nibs. We know the D-like is a number five nib. The Draco, that nib, it looks bigger. It's certainly wider and it's a fraction longer, but not really all that much, is it? And to me, this is one of the things which lets the Draco down. I think this would have been far better with a number six size nib. Again, this is my personal view, but to me, looking at the rest of the pen, the nib just looks too small. If we're looking at them uncapped, as you can see, the Draco still slightly longer. We saw that when I showed it in my hand, but it's nice to see a side-by-side -side comparison. Let me post all of these and we'll take another look. So here we are posted. What I've tried to do is line the end of the cap up. The D-like of all the pens is still the shortest, only just shorter than the Metropolitan, but to me, I would call it as being shorter, but really we're talking fractions of a centimeter. The Draco posted is the longest of them all, but I do think posted, the Draco is also unwieldy. Let's just get rid of the Metropolitan and the Safari and take a look at these two nibs side by side. So looking at these side by side, yes, definitely that Twisby nib. I'm going to say it's a prettier of the two. It's got that nice rose gold colouring. It's also got that nice decoration on it. I like the way we've got the decorative border and then the Twisby logo. The D-like, well, we've got a little bit of decoration at the top, but then we've just got right in then below the breather hole. It's a shame because I think that's one of the things that lets the D-like down. The nib's just so plain. So now it's time to look at some weights. Here we've got my trusty skills of measurement. With the D-like, that weighs 21 grams. Its cap is 7 grams. With the Draco, 31 grams. A little bit more, but not substantially. The cap, that's 10 grams. Let's just move this out. I'll fetch in my trusty rule of measurement. There we go. So with the D-like, we've got a length of 13.3 centimeters capped. Uncapped, we've got 11.9 posted. About 15.5. The width of the body here at the widest part is 1.27 centimetres. The width of the cap is 1.42 centimetres. And the section, it goes from the narrowest at 1.07 centimetres up to 1.2 centimetres. As I say, I think that section a little bit on the thin side. The Draco, 
14.2 centimeters uncapped 12.8 centimeters posted 16.9 centimeters the width of the body definitely a wider body this is 1.52 centimeters the cap 1.6 centimeters and the section the narrow wrist is one centimeter and it goes up to 1.2 so very similar but it feels a lot wider let's get rid of that this is the bit though we've been waiting for we want to see how the pens write so here comes my optic paper this is in a black and red notebook but uses oxford optic paper what ink am i going to be using i've decided to use the same ink in both pens because that's a good way to get a comparison isn't it the ink i've picked is by diamine and it's diamine Syrah. so this is a nice i'm going to call it a crimsony color there's a fair bit of purple in it though i do see some shading on this card and in most pens i do get a little bit of shading so it'll be interesting to see if that comes through in our writing today so the first pen this is the D-like, New Moon 2, 5 nib. It only comes in a fine nib. And this cost me a whopping 18 Australian dollars. The ink, as I said, by Diamine. And it's a Syrah. Drying times, immediate. 10 seconds, 30 seconds. So after 30 seconds, that one's nice and dry. I'm going to move the microphone down to the page so you can hear the pen writing. That's a really nice smooth nib. I will be honest, I have done a little bit of work on it. So I've used some micro mesh just to smooth it off a touch. But even before that, it was nice and smooth. It doesn't feel like it's dragging on the paper, but conversely, it doesn't feel like it's gliding over the paper. There's a really nice tactile feel to it. The ink, we can see here, there's definitely a fair bit of shading coming through, which I think is nice to see. So let's do some writing with the other pen. Just going to slightly move the paper. So the second pen by Twisby. And it's the Draco. This has got a broad nib. It cost me 215 Australian dollars. That's about 12 times the cost of the New Moon 2. That's a big amount, isn't it? The ink, well, we've already said. It's by Diamine, and it's Syrah. Let's test our drying times, so immediate. 10 seconds. <laughs> if anything, it looks wetter at 10 seconds than it did when it was immediate. 30 seconds. Still slightly wet at 30 seconds. So we'll go for one minute. After a minute. Yeah, that's nice and dry now. I'll move the mic so you can hear the pen writing. So with that one, again, the nib, it feels quite nice to write with. The thing I notice is, to me, the nib, it does feel a little bit on the stiff side. I'm still seeing a little bit of shading, and we'll do a comparison between the two in a second. Obviously, 
the line it's much thicker you know we're talking about a fine versus a broad nib let's quickly go over and we'll take a look in my Gearland leather notebook and this uses 52 GSM Tomai River paper so we start with the new moon 2 you know I'm calling out here it's comfortable to use posted unposted bit too short not unusably short but certainly for a longer writing session I need to use it posted and it's quite comfortable so it doesn't bother me the nib smooth tiny bit of feedback it feels a bit soft so there's a bit of bounce to it so it doesn't feel like using a pencil you can see some color variation yes it as i'm calling out doesn't jump out of the page but if you're looking for it it's there had no issues with hard starting or with skips the ink i've called out i think for this pen the color of the pen is more brown so the ink isn't really a spot on match the next line below we've got a hash mark then i smudge one we've got a little scribble then i smudge one you know it's moderately wet below that we've got line variation so the first three is no pressure the next three is with pressure and then we've got the figure of eight. So here you can see, yes, we do have a nice amount of line variation available to us. Then at the very bottom, that scribble, that's one continuous line just to check on the ink flow. So all together, really nice. I enjoy using it. Let's switch over and look at the Dracos. So on this one, the ink looks darker. I'm guessing that's because it puts down a slightly wider line. This pen is one that I'm in two minds about. It does write nice. It does look nice. I just think it's overpriced. This was 215 Australian dollars. And to be honest, I do think that was too much for what you get. If it have had the number six nib, I think it may have been worth it. But as it is, I would have been more comfortable paying about 150 Australian dollars. I haven't used this ink in a while, which is why I thought, well, I'd get it out for this test, to be honest. So I'm enjoying it. It's nice to use an ink that's been sat in the cupboard for a few months. I can definitely see character in my writing. I don't think it's as much as I see from the fine nib. The nib, it's nice and smooth. Again, no issues with skipping or hard starts. I think this ink, it's a nicer color match to this pen. It's a wetter pen. As we saw on the optic paper, you can see on here as well. Line variation, again, you can see there's a little bit. Not a massive amount, but we weren't expecting that anyway. And then the flow at the bottom, again, keeps up quite nicely. So let's jump back over to the optic paper. What I've done here is I've lined it up so we can see the writing samples from both pens. You can definitely see a difference in the lines. We expected that. I personally can see more shading coming through from the finer nib than I can from the broad nib. The New Moon 2, drier, going to be better for longer note-taking sessions. But I also enjoy using the broad nib, so I think it's a little bit of much of a muchness. As I've said earlier, 12 times the cost for the Draco over the New Moon 2. That's a big difference, because at the end of the day, guess what? They both do the same thing. They let you get ideas out of your head and onto paper. So let's give these some scores. Well, I'll fetch both pens back in so we can have them both on the pages. Well, there we go. So with the D-like, I love it. I think the pen looks nice. It's a browner color than what I usually think it is. But again, I actually quite like that. It's a bit of a sharp pen. That does come into play when you're writing, but not enough to cause an issue. With the Draco, you know, just look at these coloring. It's a lot pinker. To me, I prefer the browner of the D-like, but again, it's a very personal point. I still think it looks nice. It's still enjoyable to look at. You know, we get a lot of chatoyancy as we turn it around. I'm just going to do a little bit there. For pen looks, well, what am I going to do? To me, it's hard to separate in terms of looks because I think they look, both look equally nice. So I'm going to give both these pens 9 out of 10 in terms of pen looks. Writing experience. I love the way the Draco feels in my hand. It's nice and wide at the bottom. It's a nice length. Altogether enjoyable to have in my hand and use. With a D like, not so much. It feels narrow. It feels short. I have to use this posted if I'm going to be using it for any length of time. So for writing experience, and this is where I'm thinking about how much do I enjoy using this? Because the D-like is short and I need to use it posted, I've got to give that just 9 out of 10. Whereas for the writing experience on that Draco, 
I'm going to give that one a 10 out of 10. Ink Fleur. Both keep it really nice. No issues with either of them. There we are, just moving the pens out of the way. When we looked on the Tomai River paper, there was no issues. So Ink Fleur, I'm going to give them both 9 out of 10. So now we come to the interesting score. Value for money. The D-Lite. $18. It lets me get ideas out of my head and onto paper. I enjoy using it. To me, value for money, this is a 9 out of 10 because $18, to be honest, you're going to struggle to get better value. The Draco, 12 times the cost, 215 Australian dollars. As I said, personally, I feel that this Draco, it's overpriced. If it had been about $150, yep, I'd have been more happier. I'm still glad I got it. I still enjoy using the pen. But in terms of value for money, I think the best I can give this is a 7 out of 10. Which means the total scores for the D-like is 9 out of 10. And for the Draco, it's 8.75 out of 10. So they end up being quite close. Of these two pens, I really do prefer the D-like. I know I've gone on about this a few times. I could get 12 D-likes for the price of one Draco. So I could have all a load of different colours and maybe even play around with some of the nibs. So I could get a lot more, I'm not going to call it fun, but I could get a lot more of enjoyment and variety by using the D-Lights. The Draco, yep, yeah, it's always inked up. It's comfortable to use. I enjoy writing with it, but I still have to come back to the cost. So this is my showdown between the d like New Moon 2 and the Twisby Draco. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What do you think of these pens? Have you got them? Have you got pens similar to them? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment. Well, it just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.